You've officially retired from refereeing. What keeps you busy these days? Um, I've got a couple of little uh, fitness things that I've uh, embarked on, so hopefully I'll be able to to complete my task. Um, I used to do a lot of long distance road running, so um, I'm trying to get back into it. So comrades in two oceans are on the radar. Not quite ready yet, but hopefully down the track. Um, I'm trying to sort of uh, forge a niche for myself uh, in the in the media, mm -hmm. in respect of um, obviously in the rugby environment, but um, at the moment just a little bit shotgun, a little bit trying trying to find an avenue where I can use my skill set to the best advantage of the public. Well, good luck. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Okay, South Africa has a proud reputation for producing some of the best referees in the world. Is the future bright, in your opinion? Absolutely. Besides Craig Jabe and uh, Jakub Paper, who are already, I would say, in the top six, both of them in the world, um, there's another four guys below, ma maybe five guys below, that are, that are um, really promising. Yeah. And they're not only promising in terms of a South African perspective, but in terms of world refereeing, you know, they're dominating the stage, they're refereeing finals on the seven circuit, uh, the under-21, World Cup under-21s, things like that. So, um, so I do feel that um, there's a good look. You touched a little bit on this just now, and you've been um, quoted on record as saying Craig Jobert is the number one referee. Why do you regard him so highly? Um, I think he's, he's got a lot of experience now, um, and critically he's got a few ingredients that you need to rise above the others. I think he's got a good understanding of the game, he's got a good rapport with players and coaches, he's got charisma when he's on the field, and he's not scared to um, admit error. So, you know, I think he's got the package. I, I don't for one second say that he gets it right all the time, and I think he's had, you know, some dodgy decisions and some poor games, just like everybody else. Yeah. But in terms of uh, the product that he offers, I think he's, um, he's right up there. Have rugby laws become too complicated, do you think, since you've started your career? Um, no. I think the RB is doing a really good job trying to refine um, the laws mm -hmm. and um, SA Rugby in particular does really well in terms of innovation um, and trying to find avenues to uh, promote the game and get it to a new level. This year they've instituted a two referee system which I'm a massive fan of. I think just, just the mere presence of another set of eyes on the field discourages um, players from you know, committing offences, yeah. and if that is the case, then you'll get more ball in play and more and more rugby. Do you think the changes have made it complicated for the fans? No, I don't, I don't think that at all. I think this. I think rugby needs to morph. You know, you can't. Uh, the game was. You know, a lot of these laws were set up. Uh, you know, hundred years ago, mm -hmm. and the players have become bigger, stronger, faster. So it's very important that you adapt to the modern day needs. And you know, one of the things that. The, you know, I think the main debate in respect of technology as an example is that if we use too much technology it will slow the game down but on the other side and very importantly there are people's livelihoods at stake here you know the coaches and players and if referees are making mistakes or making decisions which are not accurate and impacting on competitions with those inaccurate decisions and after all this is a professional sport this is not amateur this is not a game, you know, this is this is a profession, this is a livelihood for many people. Okay, if you could change one current law, what would it be, if you would change any? The most contentious area at the moment is, is the scrum, mm -hmm. so I would like to find avenues which make the players more comfortable and and then after that, you know, if they are f more comfortable, I think the public would uh, would find it easier to follow, but I think by and large, there's a lot of there's a you know large body of players at scrum time who um, get regularly frustrated mm -hmm. across across large spectrums, clubs, schools, uh, internationally, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The, the very fact that we've been asked to make clearer decisions at scrum time has cut down the resets of the scrum and, and increased ball in play by about 16 percent at scrum. So there the are innovations. There are, there is an effort to make sure that uh, the game is promoted in the best interests of the public. But it's still difficult. It is still a complex game with grey areas and I think it's a work in progress and, and may always be.